Digital Personal Data Protection Bill has been passed in the Lok Sabha and it is most likely to be passed in the Rajya Sabha as well without any problems. But this particular law has been facing a lot of criticism from the opposition as well as from various other people. Why this criticism is coming? In this video, we will talk all about that. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. This is your turn. I am Ramasamy Jai Prakash. Before looking at the problems in this particular bill, we will see how this bill came to be. We will look at some of the background. In August 2017, a landmark case was fought in the court. In the case of Justice K.S. Putuswami v. Union of India, the Supreme Court ruled that privacy is a fundamental right. And after that, a lot of debate were uh, taking place regarding privacy and an expert committee was formed by the union government to address privacy more seriously, to formulate laws to tackle uh, privacy and to ensure uh, the safety of personal data. After a lot of deliberation, a draft bill was tabled in the Lok Sabha in December 2019. It was called Personal Data Protection Bill. This was received with a lot of criticism and this was sent to a standing committee and a joint parliamentary committee. This had to be reviewed because of the criticism that it received. And after the report from this committees, it was decided that uh, the union government will take back the bill. So in August 2022, the union government took back the bill from the parliament. And in November 2022, a draft bill was given to the public which had a lot of revisions over the previous bill. And this was uh, given a new name also. This was called Digital Personal Data Protection Bill, the one that we are seeing now. A draft of this current bill was given in November 2022 to the public and public opinion was received. After this, further changes were made to this particular draft and effectively a third version of it was tabled in the parliament after getting the cabinet approval. In the ongoing parliamentary sessions, this has been cleared in the Lok Sabha and it is most likely to be cleared in the Rajya Sabha as well. Now let us look at the problems in this particular law and the criticisms that it is getting. The first point is this bill is not addressing how data is collected both by the government entities and the non-government entities. For example, you are going to get a SIM card and you are asked for Aadhaar card and you are not uh, willing to give Aadhaar card and but the company is forcing you to give it. Although previous clarifications were given by the union government as well as the court that Aadhaar card should not be asked compulsorily, that is the practice in everyday life. So if any company is demanding Aadhaar card or even if the government, many of the government services are linked with the Aadhaar and if you don't give the Aadhaar card, you will not be able to access those government services. So if you are saying that I don't want to give my Aadhaar card, I don't want to share my uh, uh, biometric data because Aadhaar is linked with the biometric data, right? So if you are saying like my, I don't want to share my biometric data, so hence I am not giving you my Aadhaar card you are not able to do that because this particular law is not uh, stating anything particular about this aspect. And even in your personal life, if you are using your phone and you are having a conversation with someone and you make some, you talk about some topic and you, immediately you see ads about that particular topic in your phone. This is something everybody would have come across and we would be having a fear that uh, maybe my phone is listening to me. Maybe my uh, the social media apps that I'm using is listening to me. So we'll have all this fear, right? So this particular bill does not address how these social media companies or these mobile companies are accessing our data. This does not fundamentally change anything. After a similar European law, most companies have adopted an option of uh, getting your approval. So even now that practice is going on, most companies have uh, done that. So if a company had already started following the European standards, they'll not need to change anything uh, due to this particular law. So this is not going to change much how these uh, companies are uh, accessing our personal information. Especially while signing up in various apps, we give out a lot of our personal data. Uh, this law does not address any of those issues, but this has one uh, caveat. And that is, if you are leaving these uh, social media platforms, if you are exiting some kind of service where you have already given your data, there is an option, there is a provision now for us to request a deletion of our data and they have to comply with it. So there is one scope in that regard, there is one scope for deletion of our data. 
and there comes the second problem in this law if there is a data breach how is this law handling it it doesn't handle effectively or as well as it could have done for example the earlier proposals said that there will be a penalty of 500 crores but now it has been uh, reportedly reduced to 250 crores so the fine amount has come down and also in case of a data breach a, an individual you or me or anybody who's affected that person will not be compensated by the company that was the cause for the data breach that didn't handle the data carefully so the company will not be liable to pay the individuals who have been affected instead all the funds or all the penalty that is collected from that company will be pocketed by the union government there is no remedy for individuals guaranteed by the bill per se now comes the third problem in it and this is a massive one this particular bill when it is becoming a law when it becomes a law it will fundamentally undermine the right to information act according to the right to information act especially the section 81j of the act personal information need not be given out to the public it need not, it need not be made public but there is an exemption to this law if there is uh, going to be a public interest and public good and which is going to cause more good for the public and the society in that case personal information can be revealed this exemption is given in the right to information act in this particular section this new bill is going to amend this particular section and it is going to give a blanket ban uh, on revealing any kind of personal data and if we combine with what is defined as person in this particular bill in that case we come across a shocking revelation that a person is a broadly defined category it could be an individual it could be a firm it could be a company it could be an association or a group of people it could be anything even the state a massive category is combinedly called a person so anything any information has the potential to be denied by the rti any information that we seek the rti officer the information officer can deny stating that it is connected to a person and this person could be anything anybody so any information can be uh, denied if it is an inconvenient information to the government or the people at the running the government that information can be denied so this particular amendment has a lot of potential for misuse and if it is going to be misused quite regularly there is no point in having a separate right to information act it is as good as dead let us look at another example a public sector bank writes off a loan of 1 lakh crore in that case we come and ask who this uh, write off was given to who was given this benefit we file an rti for this and the public sector bank can deny this information stating that it is a personal information so this particular amendment has a lot of potential for misuse and rti as we know it may not exist anymore so this is the third criticism let's focus the fourth criticism that is everything is excessively controlled by the union government so union government gets an ample amount of power and a separate data protection board will be constituted and this board will have members appointed by the union government the chairperson will be appointed by the union government and other members also will be appointed by the union government that their tenure and everything how they function everything will be decided by the union government already there is a lot of criticism that most of the central government agencies that are supposed to be independent is not functioning independently and a new board which has a complete oversight by the union government may not function independently at all so it has a potential for treating people or treating cases partially and it also could be misused and there is no regulation or there is no control per se for this particular uh, board to function independently there is no scope for it so this is the fourth criticism let's look at the fifth criticism and this is a biggie we are looking at the problems in this particular law and apart from the problems there are many regulations that have been brought forth by this particular law as well and for to cite one example there is a new uh, definition for white listing and black listing for data transfer earlier it used to be like only data could be transferred or backed up only to the white listed countries and this was not quite efficient and this was not quite convenient for the companies that are handling the data the data fiduciaries but now a blacklisting method has been adopted using this it is quite easy for uh, the companies to function because 
the data need not be backed up only to the blacklisted countries to any other country this particular data any data that is collected by the company can be easily transferred so many regulations have like this have been put in place just because of this particular bill and when it becomes a law this will be mandated as well but all these regulations are pretty much one sided what this law basically does is it bisects in the middle as one side there is government entities and one side non government entities whatever the regulations that are proposed by this bill all this is focused only on one side that is the non government entities towards the government entities it is not doing anything it has not addressed how the government is going to handle the data the government is free to handle any data and collect any amount of data that it deems fit and it can handle the data however uh, it wants and it also can retain the data however it wants and there is no scope for any uh, restriction or any regulation put on the government what this could mean is any data of the individual could be misused or it could be uh, used to target a, a particular individual and there is no checks and balance for that kind of abuse or misuse by the people running the government already the union government agencies are free to handle uh, or share the data amongst themselves and this particular bill when it becomes a law it will strengthen this data sharing uh, through various dip government departments so there is a possibility of a personal data could be misused for targeting an individual and this is not addressed at all by this particular bill this is very very scary because an elected government it could be the current government or the future government whatever it could be if a government decides that or people are uh, running the government decide that they want to create a police state and a surveillance state like uh, china this bill does not put any kind of speed breaker or any kind of blockade for that measure any government if it chooses to uh, become a police state and surveil its own citizens there is no checks and balance there is no protection for the citizens from uh, because of this law it is not creating any roadblock for that this is the major problem just because this bill does not address this particular issue it does not mean that india is going to become a police state or a surveillance state but if anybody in future any government in future decides that they want to create such a country there is no protection for us so these are the five major problems that we thought everybody should know regarding this particular bill and this is most likely to become a law so it is even more uh, important for citizens to know what are the problems in this particular law if you think uton's job is important and this kind of job needs to be done you can support us by donating to us the link is in the description below thank you